Hello, I'm Michelle Crummel, and in this video, we're going to be looking at some focused note taking strategies that we can use to ensure long term retention when we're learning math. I'm going to pretend to be a student in a math class taking notes on a new lesson. So the lesson we're using as an example here is about average and instantaneous velocity. And my teacher has a presentation prepared that we're going to be working through as a class. So I can see on the title slide of the presentation here, the lesson is on average and instantaneous velocity, and there is also an essential question. What is the relationship between a moving object's position, average velocity, and instantaneous velocity? So that gives me some idea going into these notes what we're going to be talking about. And as we work through the presentation, we're going to be discussing different concepts we're going to be working through some sample problems and I'm going to want to take notes as we go. So I could take notes just starting from a blank sheet of paper or in this case my teacher has provided me with skeleton notes. So they are already partially filled in and they're already set up in the Cornell note taking format. You don't have to use the Cornell format. You can use any type of note taking format that works well for you. I like the Cornell format and if you want to use the Cornell format, your basic setup would be to write the title of the lesson at the beginning of your notes and the date and the essential question. And some teachers, rather than giving you an essential question, might give you a learning outcome or a lesson objective. So all of those are good things to put at the beginning of your notes for that lesson. Then we're going to divide up the rest of our space into two columns. So the column on the left only needs to be about one third the width of the paper. And this area here we're, is going to remain blank when we're first taking our notes. The other column can be a, the, you know, the rest of the width of the piece of paper, so about two thirds. And here is where we're going to take our main notes during the lesson. And it's a good idea to actually draw this dividing line in between those two columns to help stay neat and organized when you're taking your notes. So the first phase is taking our notes. And I have already completed my notes for this lesson. And this is what this looks like. So I'll just show you quickly all four pages of notes that I have taken for this lesson. Here's page one, page two, page three, and page four. And you saw that I did not write anything in this space at all during this first phase of note taking. On the last page of my notes here, I have space to write a summary and I have a space to write down questions. And I'm also not going to fill this in during that initial phase of note taking. Let's go back to the first page. So my notes are complete, at least for this first phase. The next phase of note taking is called processing our notes. And we don't want to do this immediately after taking the notes. We want to let a little bit of time pass, even if it's just an hour. My recommendation is to start processing your notes right before you sit down to do your homework. And I have already processed these notes, so we will take a look at that. Processing your notes involves highlighting important ideas, highlighting or circling or underlining new vocabulary, definitions, theorems, adding anything we might have accidentally left out the first go round, jotting down any extra notes or ideas that we have. It's basically annotating the notes that you already have. And we're going to use color to help emphasize important ideas and make our notes easier to read when we revisit them in the future. So let me point out a couple of the things I did while I was processing my notes. First of all, uh, what, when you start processing, you should be reading through your notes again. So you're reading everything that you wrote. You also want to read the information on the paper so that you can sort of figure out if what you wrote makes sense, if it was clear, if it's complete, or maybe there's something lacking there. And what I noticed right away was that I forgot to label my axes the first time I took these notes. 
And over here, I had a reminder there. It said, be sure to include a scale and axis labels, including units, whenever you sketch a graph. So my second go around when I was now actually paying attention to this column over here, I realized that I had forgotten to label my axes. So when you're processing, now is when we're gonna use this space over here. And in this particular set of notes, my teacher has already provided me some question prompts, some extra things to think about as I'm reading through my notes. You won't always have that, so sometimes it's up to you to think of those good questions to ask. So while I was processing then, I decided to highlight that axis labels because it was something I forgot to do and draw attention to it there. And then down here, um, I also wanted to highlight the notation there. Anytime you see new notation, it's important to highlight it. In mathematics, every little bit of notation has specific meaning. So it's always important that we understand what everything means. And sometimes when you're taking part in the lesson, in the moment, the notation is clear to you. It makes sense because your teacher is there talking about it, explaining it, and maybe you don't really feel the need to write down what all of the notation means. But it's really important for your future self when you go back and look at your notes. Because when you're taking notes in the moment, you're not really doing that for yourself in that moment. You're taking notes for your future self. So that a week from now, when you look at these notes, they're gonna make sense to you. A month from now, when you look at these notes, they're gonna make sense to you. At the end of the course, when you're studying for your exams, it's all gonna come back and make sense to you. Again, the goal here is long-term retention. So sometimes when you're in class and you're taking notes for the first time, you might not write something down because you think it's easy to remember or easy to understand but you probably should write it down anyway because your future self might not remember or as easily understand. So I also highlighted secant line because that's a new vocabulary word. It's actually probably not new. I've been exposed to secant lines right in a previous course, but it's something that maybe I didn't remember right off the top of my head. And so again, I wanna draw attention to that because it is an important vocabulary word in this lesson. Let's take a look at page two. Now on page two, at the top, I had forgotten to write down a definition. If we go back to the original notes that I took here, in this box, I had forgotten to write that information down. So while I'm processing my notes, I noticed that and then I filled in that information. So that is part of processing as well, is to add to the notes that are already there if necessary. Over here, a note to myself to remind me what we were doing in this activity and why. So going through the activity, at first, you know, it might seem a little repetitive. We, got, we have these eight different calculations. Why were we asked to do this eight different time, times with different values? We've got some strange values like 0.799. What was the purpose of this? So in processing my notes, I after I've already completed the lesson and we've had some you know further discussion uh, uh, about the lesson, now looking at back at it again, I can think to myself, oh yeah, the purpose of this was to see that we are changing this number to get closer and closer to 0.8. That was the purpose of this activity. Or in the second column, we are changing um, these, the second value here, the right end point of the interval to get closer and closer and closer to 0.8. And so I wanted to write a note to myself over here as a reminder of, you know, what was the point of this so that in the future when I'm looking at it, I can remember the really important idea that we're developing as part of that activity. Here I've asked a question uh, because we did something here that I was maybe a little confused about or just wondered, why did that happen? Is that always gonna happen? Is this even important? And so you should be writing down those questions as you go as well. The next page, I'm highlighting definitions. And if you are taking notes from blank paper, when you do encounter definitions and theorems, you do wanna you know, box them in and draw attention to them because they are super important in mathematics. And on the last page here, again, I'm just adding some notes to myself, some reminders, 
so that when I look at my work in the future, it makes sense and I'm able to follow it. And at the end of these notes, there is a space here for the summary and the questions. And I said during phase one, I'm ignoring that. And during this phase, I am also going to ignore that because that belongs in our next phase. So before we move on to the next phase, again, we want to allow some time to pass. You're not going to get the most benefit if you do all of the phases right after one another. The next phase is going to be summarizing our notes. So you want to let a day pass or even a week pass before you come back and revisit these notes and summarize them. So I have already summarized these notes and what I would do when I sit down to summarize is read through them again. I've already processed them so my, my eye is going to be drawn to those really important concepts and important most important information in the notes so I can read through pretty quickly. This is now my third time reading these notes so I can go a little bit faster and again I can see where my focus needs to be and as I'm reading this again I'm thinking about you know how to summarize the main ideas. So we go through the notes here's my four pages of notes and then I'm going to write my summary. So I'm just highlighting those main ideas in my summary and then also jotting down any questions that I still have about the notes. And you don't have to wait that long to write questions. You should always be writing down questions as you have them. But it is important at this point to think about any questions you still have. What has not been clarified? That's super important to, to really solidify that in your mind before going into your unit test. There are two more phases as part of the focus note taking process. One of those involves connecting your thinking. And part of that is going through and using that space you have in the first column to write down study questions or just good higher level thinking questions that address the key concepts in the notes. So I sort of built that into the processing phase rather than treating it like a separate phase. But you can take the time to go back and do that, writing some study questions in the margins in each little section of the notes. And then the fifth phase in the focus note taking process is applying what you've learned. And for me, the applying what I've learned is done as part of the homework ex exercises. You're applying the content from your notes to the homework problems that you're practicing. So you're doing part of that probably without even thinking about it. So we really are hitting all five phases, but I think the if you can really just plan in your mind to have three interactions with your notes. One, you're taking the notes. And then before you sit down to do your homework, so that's at least an hour, but probably, you know, a day or several hours. But right before you sit down to do your homework, you're processing your notes. So that's phase two. Doing your homework, that's going to be another interaction with your notes if you have your notes in front of you while you're doing your homework. And then wait a day, a couple of days, summarize your notes. And then before your test, go back and write down some good study questions. So if you do that, you will have hit all five phases of focus note taking. You'll have interacted with your notes several times, reinforcing all of those things that you've learned. And that's really going to help you with long term retention. So I hope you'll give this a try and be consistent with it. You do this with every set of notes. And the more you do it, the easier it's going to get. and It's going to become a habit. Thanks for watching and best of luck.